Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated, where today I'm speaking with actress Jama Williamson. Welcome, Jama. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I did get that right, right? You did it. Yay! I took a breath and I wondered, but then you got it. It's Jama. Jama. I had to just dive in. Like, I've I've forced myself. Yeah, I felt your confidence. I felt it. You you went for it. I didn't even think about it. That's right. Well, thank you so Try much that. for being here. I'm such a fan of yours. Aw, that's so nice. Thank <laughs> you. I want to record that and play it over and over. Thank you. You, nice. you know, that's so funny because when I when I do interviews and someone says something nice for me, that's what I say. I'm like, oh, I'm playing that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm putting right. out there. Put that little recorder on loop in my brain. That's, that's right. That's right. Which is, I, I, I think that's, podcasters and actors probably have that in common that we, we're just looking for some validation. Oh, aren't we all? Isn't yeah. that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, welcome. Thank I'm, you. So I usually start here. I, could, I always, I'm very curious about how people got started. So I was just mm-hmm. wanting to know, you know, how you decided to get into the entertainment business, how you went about that. Yeah. Um, well, I, kind of a, a sort of circuitous route. I, I started, <laughs> I grew up in uh, Indiana, in Evansville, Indiana. Yep. And, um, oh, my family isn't surprised that I'm an actor. I was always the one like at the <laughs> birthday parties, like finding the camera uh, as it moved around the room. And I just liked to be the center of attention. And I, you know, yeah. I sort of soaked up being able to entertain and make people happy. And, um, but it wasn't until, you know, I was the lead in my eighth grade school play. Like I did, you know, plays in high and in, in grade school. But then when it what started was to the get play? To like, it was called Meeting, uh, no, oh, something, is it Meeting Miss Burgess or A Day with Miss Burgess? I think okay. I was Miss Burgess, which oh, I played nice. like a teacher, um, which was kind of hard because when you're in eighth grade, I had to be like all buttoned. And it turns out it was like the lead role, but it was a bummer because my best friend got the ingenue part, you know, Yeah. <laughs> and I was this sort of boring buttoned up teacher. Just, I had just had the most lines. That's the only thing that gave that made it leady. Um, but, uh, but I didn't, but I, when I really could have pursued acting like in a serious way, I was at high school level Yeah. and I, my, we had a really good high school department, but I had already auditioned to be a cheerleader auditioned. I tried out to be a cheerleader <laughs> and, um, and I was already in the, I was already in the cheerleading squad and I tried out for a play and I was really excited. I would have played a broom handle at that point. I just wanted to, be, I just <laughs> loved the idea of being on stage and being around all these creative people and in a way that it was, you know, kind of real with these, you know, nope. real theater, these real lights and sound boards and all this. And the, the theater director at, told me, I'd love to give you a part in this play, but it conflicts with acting. I mean, with uh, cheerleading, the, the rehearsals and the, my practices for cheerleading. So you'd have to choose one or the other. Ooh. And as a really, you know, forward thinking person, you know, really contemplating my future and trying to figure out what would serve me best in life, I chose, yeah. I, I chose cheerleading. So um, <laughs> I did not <laughs> do this full play. I did, I was a cheerleader for uh, all four years in high school. And I, and I re- came to regret that um, as when I went to college, I went to Notre Dame and I re- realized it was my last chance to try to be an actor. And I took uh, acting classes at, as electives and I fell in love with my theater drama teacher and she just was magical. And she was like a unicorn in Indiana who was, had done theater and plays and commercials and voiceovers and sort of introduced me to this idea of being able to be a professional actor. People might not know who you are, but you can work as an actor your whole life and it's wonderful. And so I was like, I'm going to New York, I'm pursuing acting and (laughs) all of the while thinking, God, why did I waste those four years in high school cheerleading? You know, I could have like gotten a jump on my career, like my life. And as it turns out, my favorite job, I think I've ever done, perhaps. Well, maybe not. My favorite theater job. I did this play in New York in my early twenties called Debbie Does Dallas, and you might, you know, might know the story. I, uh, I do know Debbie Does Dallas, but it wasn't a play. I'm sure you do know the story. Um, but for those who might not know, it's about this young cheerleader named Debbie who just wants to get to Dallas and be a Dallas cowgirl cheerleader, but she just doesn't have enough money. 
So she calls on her friends to use their skills and talents to help her raise money to get to Dallas. And I played Roberta, one of her dear friends um, who worked in a candle shop. And I helped her raise the money to get to Dallas. And it's this musical theater comedy. It's, it was genius. It was like a, you know, it was honestly like a feminist piece. Um, and it was directed by this wonderful director. Uh, who, her name's Erica Schmidt. She's actually married yeah. now to Peter Dinklage. Uh, that oh. everyone knows from Game of Thrones. Of course. And she's a wonderful, super smart woman. And she wrote this play kind of turning it on its head. And it was actually turned <laughs> out to be kind of like a feminist piece. And I got to play a cheerleader. And it really felt like full circle. Like that time in high school was not wasted. It led me here <laughs> to Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> so it was... It was kind of a full circle thing, um, but I was really pleased that I uh, had the skills, you know, to be yeah. able to do like the jumps and the lifts. That's, and that's quite an so, origin story. Yeah, yeah. So then I found myself in New York and doing theater and loving every second of it. Yeah, you you threw me because I was like, oh, she's she's choosing theater, but then <laughs> you know. said you chose cheerleading. I'm like, what? Wait, what? I know. <laughs> I know if I, you know, because at 16, you don't have any forethought. You're just no. like, what is going to serve me today? Um, and, you know, cheerleading seemed to like help my social life. So that just felt like. So could you tumble? I could. Um, I wasn't very great at it, but I could do a round up back handspring. That was like the only, that was my big move. That's, that's the move though. You have yeah, to have that. That's, yeah. It's, you got, you got to do the backhand spring, at least for tryouts. I, I would do it for tryouts and then probably wouldn't do it that many more times during the season, <laughs> but I would always do it at tryouts and nail it. <sighs> and then so I would promptly stop. I saw that, that you had done that play and that, that really fascinated me because I wonder where in the world you would come up with that idea. Hey, I'm going to make that because it was kind of a, it was kind of a musical, right? Yeah. It was a musical comedy. Um, yeah, it, you know, it was the kind of the brainchild of, um, which isn't surprising, I guess, of these three men, <laughs> these three young guys who had a theater production company in New York, um, and they had a little success. They had done the show called You're in Town, um, and it was kind of, you know, they're kind of into irreverent comedy yeah. already, and they got the rights to, to the movie, the movie rights, and, um, and a lot of the movie, like a lot of the the play had some of this direct scenes lifted from the movie because you honestly couldn't get any funnier than <laughs> the actual words of that yeah. movie. And it was such a big movie in the seventies. It was. It was the first one that, it was the first porn that had narrative. It had a whole yeah. beginning, middle, end. It had a story you could actually kind of hook, hook into and care about characters. <laughs> um, so it, obviously it made, it made a huge splash and it had big name recognition. And the guys knew that it had a lot of potential for comedy and they were right. It was super funny and just, and fun. And in the right hands of the right person, like Eric right. Schmidt, it could be done really, you know, um, provocatively, but yet like thoughtfully and, and, you know, everyone came away that Ron, Ron Jeremy came one night to the play. Um, <laughs> that was so exciting. We were like behind the, the curtain and we were all like, oh my God, he's here. It's so weird. And um, hilarious. I know he just had to see for himself what, what we were doing here and there in New York. How we made Debbie to Dallas clean, you know, um, yeah. clean family fun. <laughs> <laughs> I all This is what I remember about, about that movie. I remember a friend of mine got a, a VHS copy of it in the early 80s. And his bedroom, I don't know, it was like a 10 by 10. It was just a small little room. And there was probably 15 of us crammed in there to watch this movie. <laughs> just a bunch of young, you know, teenagers yeah. watching this uh, movie uh, with no sound because we couldn't turn it up. Or, <laughs> Someone might hear. An, an adult might hear. So right. that's, that's what I remember. Uh, yeah, the good old days. Fond <laughs> memories of childhood. <laughs> so did, I think, did you say I, think I remember I saw that movie on accident once because I had older brothers <laughs> and I I was so bored one day after school and there was, you know, at the time VHS tapes and one was marked the 1988 or 
uh, yeah, Amer uh, American Music Awards or something. And I was like, it's, I don't know, I guess, I don't know, maybe I can see like a, you know, performance by Madonna or something. <laughs> and I <laughs> put it in and it was in 1988 mm -hmm. American Music Awards. <laughs> it was not, it was David Sells. So uh, like probably a high quality copy too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> so did you sing in the musical? Um, I did, and then they took my song away. Um, oh, come on. In the workshops of it, I I tried. I am not a singer. I cannot sing. I oh, want yeah. to. I would love to, but I just I can't. Thankfully, it it, it my daughter can, so it's like skipped a generation. Oh, very nice. She got it, um, but I didn't get that skill. So I danced and I cheered and I. But I they I, and everyone. I was the only one that didn't sing. I think in the play. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it better though? Like when you, when you, your child is better at something than you are, isn't that better? Don't you just be like, yes, I'll Absolutely. take that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm having, we, my husband and I went to um, Hawaii a few months ago for our oh, anniversary nice. and we brought home just kind of on a whim, a uh, ukulele and because our daughter has <laughs> a beautiful voice and now there's just Hawaiian music drifting from her room on a daily, but she's just playing and singing. It is joy. I would, yeah, I would much rather have her have that talent. Yeah, of than course. Me. Does she know tiny bubbles? Not yet. <laughs> I should teach her that or at least expose her to it. <laughs> I mean, well, you're, you're younger than I am, but, but you might remember Don Ho. They used to have the, oh yeah. when I was growing up at about 11, 11 30 in the morning, they had the Don Ho show yeah and that's that's, that's always how he started the show was tiny right Bowl right, right. ukulele <laughs> <laughs> did you play an instrument in school i played the piano for um nope. about eight years and um and the clarinet for you know in orchestra in like grade school but um and i still plunk around on the piano a little bit but we don't have one anymore you know it's at my mom's house at home and yeah. so yeah don't really we haven't had the space in the room for in my brain or in our physical space for a piano a but piano is a commitment it. it really is i yeah. thought about it but I, then the thought passed and I they're thought so heavy it. i know and you move it one inch and it's out of tune you know yeah that's it we've got a we've got a player piano that was passed down oh. through my wife's family so it's i mean it's old but it's so heavy, and we and we wanted to to redo our floors. We were we were taking the carpet out, and they had wood floors underneath. We couldn't move it; it was too heavy. So now the yeah. floors are completely done, except where the piano is. So it's there you forever. Cut a piece of carpet around the piano. That's it. It well, no, no, no. It did. It was. It was that piece. It was actually on the hardwood. So the rest oh, okay. of it was carpeted. That oh, piece okay. wasn't. But we couldn't do anything with it, so that piece right, hasn't like been. I hope we like it there because it's staying yeah, there forever. It's never moving. We couldn't move it. That's it's the heaviest thing I've ever. What a cool this. thing, though. When it play, it play. Does it still play a bunch of different songs? It does. Work? It does. Yeah, oh, it's out so of cool. tune. It needs tuned, but it still yeah. plays. So that's, that's kind of awesome. cool. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat. So, what was your? I know you did a lot of theater. What was your first acting job for television or a movie? Um. <laughs> Well, um, God, it sounds so, I felt like I'm like a real X-rated sounding uh, resume here, but the way, the way I got my SAG card uh, was when I was still in New York and I started going out for commercials because you kind of have yeah. to do commercials in order to make money as an actor, a theater actor, yeah. theater actors aren't very uh abundant and, and right. well um, it's not why you do it and so um anyway I, I auditioned and I got this national commercial my agents were thrilled about it and it was for Valtrex which is oh. a genital herpes medicine <laughs> and I it played and played and played and played and played and played it was a very lucrative commercial for two years but the terrible thing was I would go back to my hometown and everyone just assumed that I, that I, and that, that I don't know, I guess commercials are real people. I, I don't, I don't, I yeah. guess, I don't know. Maybe I thought that too. I, I don't know. Well, so were you on the commercial or was it just a voiceover? I was on the commercial. Oh, I boy. was like one of the people. You I know the my, face. I, had a, I had a line. I did have a line. It was, uh, there's got to be an easier way. <laughs> and I remember I was, because it's so 
hard to transition from theater to, um, to film and TV. Yeah. And it's such a different set of muscles. And it was kind of great that I got my practice on this commercial because I remember when I first came to set, and I did, I performed my line. I was like, you know, breathing from my diaphragm. I was making sure the last row of the theater could hear me. And I was like, there are, uh, there has to be another way or something. And they were like, oh God, um, no, just like, just like say it, just, just, just throw it away, just say it. And I, I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to not project and not, not be really big in theatery. And I was like, there has to be another way. And they kept being like, it took me like a good hour, um, a very, very patient director to be, to finally just go, Oh, Oh, you just, I just say like, she's like, yeah, yeah. You're mic'd. You don't even, you can just say it real quickly, real effortlessly. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, this was such a education on the difference between TV and theater. Um, and so that was my, 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 how I got my SAG card. And then my first job actually was still in New York. I did a, as every New York actor does, a Law and Order episode. It's kind of a rite of passage <laughs> for every New York actor. If you don't have Law and Order on your resume when you leave New York, like oh, you're doing something you know, wrong. Yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know what's happened, but you know, you got to you got to stay in New York until you get that freaking credit. <laughs> because every New York actor has it. It's like the, the you know the badge of honor. Um, and, uh, well, and so was, did you did you commit the crime or were you the victim on law and order i neither i was so excited that i wasn't the like the dead person i have had friends that have played the dead person um but i i like something like a crime happened in my vicinity like i was like you know crying and talking about how and i had to like you know uh I had to um, stand on the, you know, I did, what do you call it when you're, and you know, in the little box for the jury. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah did. You're a, right. You're, yeah. you're a witness, the witness stand. Thank you. I was a witness. Yeah. I was a witness to a crime. Um, Very good. And uh, yeah. So it was so long ago. I can honestly just barely remember. Um, but then it wasn't until, you know, I moved to LA. Um, well, actually i that's not true. My first um, TV show, my first TV experience was a pilot that I did for um, NBC. And, uh, oh, I thought it was, I thought my career was done and made. And had was that the, was kids. it called three? Yes. Yeah. How'd you know that? Well, yeah, no one's I, of three. I, well, because it, I, I don't, I don't know why it didn't make it because it had uh, James Vanderbeek. Mm -hmm. and it had um zachary levi yeah it was i know and then like little and you. Me, like i'm i was the complete unknown i was just the theater actor that like busted in there but those two guys were you know kind of already on their way i mean james is already kind of householdy name you right. know from Dawson's creek but um and you know right after that uh my other my friend blew, blew up you know um so it was a real, and, and it was, it was right after I'd always had a dream to be on friends. I just wanted to be Jennifer Aniston, <laughs> like we yeah, all were in the nineties. And I just was obsessed with friends as we all, as not, no, 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 nothing unique here, but, um, I wanted, I was like, there's, I just wished I had been born a decade. I just wanted to be in friends. I just like, ah, <laughs> and I auditioned for this pilot and that pilot was actually written by two of the former producers of friends yeah. and friends had, had and disbanded like kind of not that long before this. Right. So he, they, they got all the friends people. So it was the friend costume designer, the friends hair and makeup, the friends, all the crew members were from friends. So it kind of, and the writers were friends. So it felt like it had this, you know, magical friends fairy dust on it. And I really was like, dreams do come true. I manifested yeah. this. This is amazing. I can't believe it. I'm going to be on like the, the sequel, you know, the, new like, friend. Like the next version of friends. Um, and it didn't get picked up. And it was probably because of me, honestly. Uh, those two guys were were so good. Um, I was such a newbie, um, and but I had them like the maybe the best week of my life. It was it was was like a when what dreams are made of. I was like like. I mean, it sounded like a good premise. So it was uh, you and James were were the married couple, 
Yeah. And Zachary was the, he was like the divorced guy. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just kind of like, three, and it was a, based on the real, the real guy's um, story. Uh, oh, these, yeah. I didn't and, know that. Yeah. Um, uh, Andrew Reich and Ted Cohen are the, were the writers. And they, this was kind of their situation where one of them was married and the third, they, the, the other guy was just kind of their third and the three of them were best friends. And um, so that's kind of how the origin story of that. And it was, my mom, my mom actually blames me for it because she's like, I think you had more chemistry with Zach than you did with James. I was married to James and I, Zach was my, it was, you know, the friend that we were bringing in. She was like, there was just like some chemistry between you and Zach <laughs> that you just didn't have with your own husband. <laughs> so maybe it was my fault. I love them both. I was enamored with both of them, but I don't know. My mom seems, seems to think it was me. <laughs> I'm guessing though, I'm guessing that even though that pilot didn't work out. It opened a bunch of doors for you. It did. Yeah. That kind yeah. of led me to, um, to LA. Um, because then all of a sudden I, you know, uh, I, I was like, Oh, LA is obviously where you need to be. If to be in the room, to book a pilot, to get on TV and be Jennifer. Ince. Um, and so <laughs> I went back to LA. I went back to New York. Um, and I'm glad I did after yep. I, after I did three, cause I was like kind of tail between my legs. Like I, you know, I was like a little, I don't know. It was my first major disappointment. And, um, uh, but I went back to New York and I was able to check off another very important box of mine, which I was, I did a Broadway play, which I'd only done off Broadway. Um, what was the play? Leading up to that, it was called losing Louie. It was the Manhattan theater club. Yeah. And the, the real big takeaway of that, I mean, I just, I had that experience and I just, I, yes. you know, for 10 years, I, I worked and trained. And you're on Broadway. That's that amazing. Training. Yeah. Thank you. It was, it was really, a, that was what I've I'd always wanted. Um, so I was really, it was, ple I was very pleased and I was glad that I had that experience, but really the big takeaway from that, as much as it was, was I made a best friend. Uh, I met this wonderful actress, Rebecca no. Kreskoff from, I don't know if you ever watched, uh, uh, the HBO show Hung. She, oh yeah, of course. Hung. She's the big, beautiful, redheaded. I know exactly who that is. Genius. Yeah, she's really good. She's wonderful. She's so good. And she and I were kind of like we played sort of nemesis is in this play, and uh, oh, cool. I came away with that. I she's now she's still one of my dearest dearest she's my sister and so we so that that's what I came away with that play but then I ended up going back to LA the next year to try to get another pilot and um instead of getting a pilot I got a baby <laughs> I got <pregnant. laughs> um and I got my husband and I uh got pregnant on the way to LA to try to book said pilot and yep. um and it kind of derailed our plans a little bit uh that'll was, happen yeah, so I I um I sort of took a little hiatus. Yeah, took a little <laughs> break. Intentional break. And uh, then a few years later, you know, Addie was born. Addie was born, and kind of like I got my my bearings. Um, I sort of jumped back in, and um, so I kind of felt like it took me a while in some ways to kind of get going in LA. I mean, I spent a decade, more than a decade, in New York. Yeah. Um, came to LA, you know, spent a few years just being pregnant and being a young mom, not a young mom, but a mom of a young baby and, um, <laughs> maybe Claire. And then, um, and then I kind of, then I got started and, um, I, you know, my, which leads us to, you know, Parks and Rec. Um, yeah, of course. Because that was, uh, a really magnificent and important piece of my television sort of story. Um, and the origin of that is, uh, you know, when I was at Notre Dame and I was dreaming about being an actor, I was roommates with a woman who is now my very <laughs> best friend. Her name's JJ Philbin. And she and I would sit on the floor of our dorm room and dream about me being an actor and her being a writer. And we would like, you know, she would write a show and I'd be on it. And the two of us would be at the Emmys and, you know, we just had, we just dreamed Going a little dreaming. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as, as, as fate would have it, uh, her, sh her show took a little while to come into fruition, but uh, her, but she married a guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
who did okay, is, is doing pretty well in the business. And uh, it was, you know, maybe a, a comic genius if there if there is such a thing. And all right, uh, all right. So are you going to tell me who it is? He, it's his name is Mike Shore. Oh and, yeah, of course. Yeah, and he, you know, after he worked, he and JJ had met when we were all in New York um, doing. Um, he was writing for Saturday Night Live, and she was yeah. getting coffee at Saturday Night Live at the time. <laughs> and uh, then she became, you know, then she went on to LA, and then her writing career sort of started after that. He he kind of came right out of the gate um, from Harvard, you know, already with like a pen in his hand, and he's ready to go. Like and after he got off the office, he had this idea for a new show. Um, and I remember even him telling me about it. And I meant being like, well, it sounds a little boring. Like, I don't want <laughs> uh, small time government. Oh, OK. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll be great because he's so smart and so funny. Yeah. But like the idea was a little bit like, wait, so they're trying to fill in a, a hole? Um, I mean, you know, it was just, I couldn't, I couldn't quite get my hands around like how small government can be funny. God, I just don't have the vision, obviously, that Mike sure has. It's so. What an amazing, one of my favorite shows. Oh my God, me too. And I can't get over still that I got to be a part of it. Um, Such a great cast too. I mean, good Lord. I know. So it's perfect. It's really perfect. Um, and Mike asked me, um, probably as a little bit of a favorite as a favor, but probably also to help me. Uh, he asked me to do the, the pilot, a reading, like, yeah. you know, to play one of the characters in the, in the pilot, like the, you know, you sit around a table, yeah, and the, the table read, there. table read. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, and I did the table read the first two episodes of Parks and Rec at just listening. And I mean, I was, my jaw was on the floor. It was like, what kind of magic is happening here? I can't believe I'm using it. <laughs> oh my God. Amy Poehler is literal, a literal goddess. And uh, Chris Pratt, excuse me, who is that, who is that guy? Right. He's so funny. Um, oh, and I, it just, I was, just, and I mean, obviously, you know, Nick Offerman, everyone and Aziz, everyone was so good. I couldn't bear it. And, um, so anyway, I was lucky enough to sort of, you know, I think kind of slide in there and, uh, yeah, and you held your own, you're, you're you. so good on that show. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I will. The, the, the part that I read was actually, uh, no, it wasn't. Did I read? I can't remember she was in the first episode. I think I think it was Shawnee Molly Tweep, who I always they, they confuse people confuse us all the time. Um, she's a great actress. I love her. I can't think of her name right now, uh, but she used to be neighbors. She's lovely. Um, and but they didn't think I was quite right for that. But they but they wanted me to come back. And he was like, you know what? I have something even better for you. I'm really excited. It's going to be like a love interest to it to Aziz. And maybe to, and I was like, Ooh, okay, I'll wait for that. Ooh. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was, yeah, so that was, fun. That was such a good show. We, we always like, we watched it, you know, each week when it was coming out and we always look forward to you showing up on there. Oh, that's love so those nice. episodes. Yeah. Thank you. We got to talk with, uh, Jim O'Hare. Um, oh, I think it was, uh, <laughs> maybe a little over a year ago and, and he was, just hilarious and and yes. he said the cast was just so close you know, yeah and still is is what he said still there. is yeah 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 that's yeah it's a really it's a really special group of people that's pretty um, and good. Jim, did you get to do the covid episode with them no no i was oh, that. i know wasn't that just yeah well, they choice. actually did a it's really a good job yeah they did, they good did. i know yeah that was really it was so refreshing. I think we all needed a little, little dose of Pawnee in that moment in time. You know? They could, they could have spun you off into your own show. We would have watched. Ah, thank, thank you. They could have done that. Why not? Keep that going. I know. I know. I, I wasn't, I was not ready to go anywhere. I was very happily part of that world. <laughs> it's, it's don't, to me, it seems like the sitcom type shows are, they're, they're in a law right now. We're not getting very many of them. I know. I don't like that. I miss I them. know. I think it doesn't the world need more of it, you know? Yes. I, mean, I really feel, I think for a while, you know, I mean, just the explosion of, um, you know, digital television and yes. and all these other platforms. I, I think that, you know, uh, I think people went away from, from just straight up, I just want to laugh and relax and escape. Um, 
And I think people are, I don't know, I think there's going to be a little recharge, a little comeback. Because I hope so. It feels like it, you know, we, we, we live the Walking Dead, basically. You know what I mean? Like, yes. we're like, we're That's living, it. our world is so intense that like, it we need comfort. Nuts. Yeah. You know, just, just the, you don't want to watch, friends. you don't want to watch, yes, friends. You don't want to watch that right here, baby. I turn, I'm in a, at, friends is on TVs. I mean, and, and the swag is everywhere. I know the 25th anniversary, but like, you know, I just feel like everyone's like, oh, remember that? Remember when we just, I don't know, <laughs> just laughed. Yeah. I miss that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're re, uh, recurring or were recurring on uh, single parents. Yes. Which was yeah. with my best friend, JJ. So JJ uh, created that show. And so oh. we finally got to, ex you know, explore our dream. We, um, we it was so fun we got to just play together and she yeah, got to awesome. I, she was my boss and we have done a lot of we've been roommates we've been moms together we have you know we've really lived this life together right side by side <laughs> and it's the one thing that we hadn't That's done awesome. it's like yeah um it's the one title that i didn't have for her mom friend you know aunt godmother so awesome. boss boss was so great oh yeah boss. <laughs> and, yeah that's pretty she, good. She is, I don't know if you watched that show at all, but it was I a do. real gem. And her and she and Mike both have a real um, way of creating yeah. shows that um, really have a ground layer of such heart. And I think that's why people, they're so beloved because the characters truly love each other. Um, yes. And then what happens is, is that the actors truly love each other. And, um, and it just, I don't know, there's just a, there's a connection that happens on sets that of people that are really live from their heart that have a different feel, you know, yeah. than you live from your head. It's a real difference. It's like, uh, I don't know, just a real heart centered show. And both of those. It's a fun show were, and fun and happy. Yeah. And, we, yeah. uh, we watched when the, when it premiered, we watched the first episode and then for whatever reason we liked it, but we just never got back to it. But then yes. over the last year, that happens. we binged it. We watched oh, good. all of it. And it's so good. Sorry. It's really a good show. And you're yeah. and you're terrific. You're terrific. Everything I've seen you on, you're terrific. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. It's <laughs> very nice. I don't feel like much of an actor right now because I haven't worked in a while. Well, so it's, it's been, been a rough year. It's been hard. It's been, yeah. It's are, been you, um, are you uh, doing things remotely? Are you doing the Yeah. The I mean, auditions? I, everything yeah i haven't been in person to audition in yeah. almost two years yeah um i auditioned i have a uh studio sort of set up in our garage that you know <laughs> we were in our I bedroom we we're doing this podcast in a bedroom yeah, i know it's it's a sacrifice for the the spouse for the family yeah. it really is i mean it's a i pull him away from his job all the time because <laughs> i have to i'm like i'm oh, sorry i have to let you know and i yeah i just make him suffer um but it's, 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 tr it's tricky. And I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have the, I feel like my track record is better when I can be in person with people. It's sort of like, it's like, wow, well, I think I, I don't know. I'm an, I, I, my, I'm a big person. <laughs> I don't you, know. I you play like off of other actors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, I just always, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just better in a room when I'm like with <laughs> other human beings. <laughs> <gasps> so, um, so I you've had you've been been like a lead actor on a few different shows. You had some pretty, um, yeah. Years. Yeah. I think I what was the um, Hollywood Heights? Yeah, I did. Um, you were was, you were on like a billion of those. Yes, I was. It was a, <laughs> such a fun show too. That actually is a another little role that I feel like is in my. I hope I get to play out again in my future. The, like the mom, like the, the mom who loves her kids so much, <laughs> who is kind of like that Gilmore girls kind of relationship, yeah. you know, where they're kind yeah. of like just as much friends as they are mother daughter. I love that dynamic and I love when it can be written well. And, um, that I got to have that with this, with Brittany Underwood, this beautiful young actor. Um, and she was played my daughter and uh i just i loved her so much and the the writing was able to like just play on that like we just yeah. it was just it was great i i hope i get to play that kind of it's kind of that connie britain from you know um it's that kind of part where oh the yeah. Mom who's just, yeah yeah, yeah. 
it's cool but strong and like um yeah, yeah i love that that's a great comparison my uh my oldest uh daughter was big fan of, uh, of friday night lights no oh. of, Holly, of ho i was a big oh, fan Hollywood. of friday night lights she loved the hollywood heights oh good yeah because yeah, i always ask them i always go to the kids i'm like okay this is who's coming on the show what have you seen them in so that was her answer she's like hollywood oh, heights wow. Yeah. I love it. She yeah, now, of course, the rest of them were Parks and Rec, but she was Hollywood. Of course, yeah. That's usually where I fall. Although the young kids, I get, because uh, I did uh, three seasons of a show on Nickelodeon called uh, School of Rock. Oh, and, yeah, of course. You were the principal. And then, yeah. And uh, it that, so the younger generation, like my, you know, my kids in my elementary school, my younger daughter in her elementary school, that's what they all know me from. <laughs> the, <laughs> did Jack Black ever come around? He didn't, but I I met him uh, one Halloween. Weirdly, um, <laughs> he, we both trick or treat in the same neighborhood. That's and, hilarious. Uh, my friend was like, I can't, "You're you know School of Rock and the School of Rock the series." Like she made the inter and in couldn't help herself and made the introduction. Um, and, did he have uh, nice no, things to say? Yeah, he did. I mean, I don't know. If I, I don't know if I believe him or not, but yeah, he was like, "Oh my god, it's so great! My kids love it." You know, but uh but he's he's super sweet we really had a dream that he would come around yeah and that, that didn't happen but yeah he he needed to make a cameo yeah yeah i've That's seen a few said. episodes of that um i mean it's it's been a been a little while but i have seen a few a uh, few episodes it was a good show the yeah, um, the cast seemed to have good chemistry the kids were talented yeah. i mean the kids good. were super talented yeah and it was it let me kind of have my um my my theater roots were able to sort of shine so it was it's fun to do kids shows you get to be really big you know it's yeah. like it's like the bigger the better and it, you know it's really bold and and arch and it's fun now you need a it's disney show play. you've done nickelodeon now you need disney yeah i know well i did a is that Disney? I just did an episode of, is that Disney? Yeah. I just did an episode of, uh, it's the only show that I've done uh, in locked, like, you know, in this weird COVID <laughs> situation. Oh my God. Um, and I did, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, I know my character's name, Miss Anderson. It was. Uh, I'll find it. Why can't mm. I think of the name? Was it Sydney to the Max? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Sydney to the Max. Um, it I, was, you know, I uh, forgot about that one, but that's, that's, that's probably a Disney show, right? That's a Disney show. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a funny, cool little concept because it takes place half in the eighties and half now. Oh, um, yeah, nice. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, you know, this, the guy sort of is looking, the dad is sort of looking back on his childhood and how he was raised around things. And so it's, it's interesting. That's why it, to the, I was like, to the max, it's such an eighties term. Like I couldn't understand. <laughs> and then it, Oh, like, that oh, is an eighties term. Okay. Yeah. Now it makes yeah, sense. I it. Yeah. It was yeah. really cute. Are you going to get to come back on that show? I don't know. Uh, it was an interesting episode because we, you know, we dealt with race. We dealt with, um, I was oh. the teacher and kind of, um, you know, I, I sort of gasped and I, I, I did a sort of a microaggression to one of my art to the students, assigning everybody <laughs> their assignment based on their own race. Like I was giving every, so, you know, um, the, the Latino person, a Latina woman to the black oh. person. Black. And so they all, they the were all got moment. together and, and yeah, and felt a little weird about it. And they decided to confront me about it. And so then I, you know, then I learned and then I'm like, I didn't understand. I didn't know that I was doing that, and, <laughs> but that you're, you know, but absolutely you're right. And so, you know, then they kind of, the class kind of got together and they did their own project of who they really wanted. They were inspired by regardless of race. And so it was, uh, yeah, it was a teaching moment. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's another, it seems like there's a lot of things to teach the world about race right now. So maybe yeah, Miss sure. Anderson will come back around and, um, you know, she'll, she'll, you, you know, that's right. That's right. Yeah. We got to get her back. Yeah. Miss Anderson to the max. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on a lot of shows that, that we love. You, you made an appearance on the uh, new girl, uh, mm -hmm. Brooklyn nine, nine, which just started yeah. last season. Yeah. You were so good on both of those. Thank you. You do good yeah. with the comedies. You're really, you're really funny. Thanks. Yeah. That's my, that's the thing that I really love to do the most. Yeah. Um, I've, you know, the, especially the older I get, the more and more I feel that way, the more I feel 
like life is life can be really uh hard and it can be kind of um you know challenging um, <laughs> to say the least and so you know to, to, to comedy just feels like even though comedy is kind of based in pain i think yes. you know this wonderful article just came out in the la times i think at uh, uh, molly shannon about you know she's one of the funniest she's a, a national treasure yeah, she's just the, sure. one of the funniest women that we have and and you know t t in our sort of like pop culture and she is she sort of confesses that a lot of her comedy has actually kind of been from a very painful past and yes. i do think that that's true of a lot of comedian comedian com comics and comedian actors and actresses um so there is probably there's some darkness I think that started probably necessitates the light you know right um, but I just I don't know it just it's more fun to swim in those waters you know like yeah. when I do something where I have to like dredge up tears and I'm like you know you know I, someone's been murdered and I I, I just I'm like oh my god <laughs> and then I have to go home and like make lunch and like you know like get up with the kids and make mac and cheese I just. I, it's just, it's so, it's a lot. It's a lot to sort of, you know, yeah. to, and I just find with comedy, it just, I don't know, it's just an easier slip and slip and slide out of it, you know, and it's just, you go to work and it's enjoyable and everyone's having fun and making each other laugh. And then you, you sort of bring that levity home and, you know, when you're with your, with your yeah. family and it doesn't sort of, sort of, I don't know, color the other parts of your life, you know? Um, so yeah, I really, I enjoy it. I hope to do That's, that. that 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 actually makes a lot of sense to to me because i've had one acting experience and it was it was just voice and it was a um i was supposed to get emotional and it, uh -huh. was, it was from a story that had happened to me so it was just it was my you know my words and everything and i was supposed to get emotional but i was a nervous wreck because i'm not an actor mm -hmm. so i was a nervous wreck and the day came we we're supposed to supposed to do the the scene and it's just over zoom you know because it's just we're just recording so it's just voice and the writer sent me a message she said you know we've got an actor that wants to that's going to play the role i was i was in a hospital it was a uh, an older gentleman that was in the hospital he's going to play the role of the older gentleman he wants to read with you well that just made me very nervous i was like uh -huh. I, I don't because i've never done any acting so I was like, okay. So we get on the Zoom, and who comes on the Zoom? Ed Asner. What? Ed Asner comes. On. Yes, Ed Asner's coming on Zoom. So he's reading the part with me. Well, he was so good. He was so good that I had no trouble getting emotional because oh. he was just he he made me emotional. He was so good. Right. He brought he was, you right into that moment. It, but now the problem I had was after that I couldn't get out of it. I was sad mm. for like two days after that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, acting, not for me. I know that's what happens because you, yeah. you know, you're a human being and you have to access real emotion, you know, in order yes. to kind of bring it and make it authentic. And then, and then you're swimming in that like sort of uh, like dirty water, you know, yeah. and it's, it's hard. I mean, that's how I was I'm down trying. for two yeah. days. Yeah. Have you ever tried to meditate? Have you ever tried meditation? I have tried to meditate. Because that is the one way out. That's the one way to. Is that it? Yep. It's that I find for, I mean, I tell every actor who will listen that like meditation to, in order to kind of bring your, it's almost like, you know, uh, that, you know, you have a cork and it's to sort of bring that cork <laughs> back up. So it's like on the surface of the water, you yep. really bring yourself down, you know, like into these depths of that. emotions and just sort of let your, your cork sort of float back up again. Um, I and, actually kind of love yeah. that. I struggled. I, I've, I've tried that before, but I, I did struggle, um, I don't think I was a very good meditator. I needed well, to practice it more. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, this is this is kind of my my um, new passion that I'm moving into. <laughs> I'm actually going to be I'm becoming a, a, a teacher of Ayurveda and a meditation coach. Um, really? Yeah, you know the lockdown sort of just re you know. I know you had to find new things. Bit. Yeah. And yeah, and. I found meditation and, and yoga had helped me so much with my anxiety. I really struggled with anxiety my, my whole life. Um, and, you know, then, of course, I find myself an actor. I know. I mean, I know. Don't, I don't know don't a lot of a lot of actors seem to have trouble with anxiety. Yeah. It's really and it's like, strange. And they choose a career that only exacerbates anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 
we're like masochists, you know, like we, it's like, we want to suffer um, because, you know, it, it, it's the inconsistency of it and the rejection, it, 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 it only makes it worse. And so um, I found, you know, about 15 years ago, I started meditating and found yoga and it completely yeah. altered the, my life. It was Amazing. I mean, like a game changer. And so now I, during lockdown on everyone's, you know, anxieties are so high anyway, around you in the world and everything you turn on, you're like, oh, oh, um, that I started, you know, meditating even more and doing yoga at home and then started to be like, I want to be able to help other people do this. You know, this has been so helpful for me. So I'm now I'm studying um, with at the Chopra Institute and um, getting my certification in order to help other people um find this because it's really it's so it's you're going to crucial. teach i'm going to be able to teach yeah yeah i'm, gonna start, I'm actually starting classes in my friend jj's backyard um i'm going to start just like gathering a couple group of girlfriends and i'm gonna because i gotta get practice hours in and i'm gonna start yeah. teaching um Love that. and then i'm eventually gonna you know have a instagram and TikTok and all that and all yeah that. you gotta do that you gotta put that yeah. out there yeah yeah i think it's important right. it's 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 needed so much right now it's very it, necessary. It really is. You need and to, I, you're going to have to come back and like teach a class. Oh, I'd love to. I'm terrified, yeah, but I'd love to. Yeah, you have to. I'll do it. I, okay, I've i done some yoga. I'm terrible. Although I, I used to like, my wife got me to do it several years ago and I'd, I'd been in a, um, a car accident. This has been years ago. But so we were doing the uh, cat cow and she'd uh -huh. say, you know, go, go into a uh, cat. I'd be like, okay. And she's like, we'll do it. I was like, I'm, I'm doing it. But my back, nothing. Your it wouldn't spine? move at all. It would, my spine would not move at all. So I, I got much better. I'm much better at that now. But it took a long time to kind of yeah. work that out. So I'm good with the, um, the warrior poses. I'm pretty good with those. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it gets dicey. Right. <laughs> so, so you come back and do, it, do one, and I'll, okay. I'll give it a go. But it, it'll be mostly comedy. <laughs> that's okay you know i love comedy <laughs> are you doing it with my angle are you doing it with a goat funny meditation teacher <laughs> is there a goat involved <laughs> no goats okay okay no goats no animals i've seen that you know, it's kind of neat it is but no i'm not i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah can you do the uh the stuff where you're you're kind of doing the handstands I can, I can, I mean, I can't hold it for very, I can hold a headstand. I can't yeah. hold a handstand for very long. Yeah, the I, I need to be up against yeah. the wall, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you're pretty I mean, good then. I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a, well, I'm a, a practicing student. I, I'm not a, I'm not a yoga teacher. Right, um, right, right. I will be a teacher of Ayurveda, um, which is sort of like a 5,000 year old uh, um, modality of health about sort of a self uh, consciousness based. Yeah holistic health kind of idea, which includes a lot of meditation and yoga. Um, well, we have to do this. This is yeah, a whole, we story. may have, a, we may have to make it into a show. This could, this could really be Ooh, something. Okay. Oh, I like it. This yeah, is like, Mike's I feel like the journey. is already like call, answering my call because I <laughs> have just been all this morning, I've been working on my Ayurveda and just realizing like, okay, how am I going to get this out there? Like I need to let people know that I'm going to be doing this and you know, and uh, do I, how do I, how do I do that? Do I, I need to build an Instagram and do I, I guess I have an Instagram right now for my acting, but maybe I'll be like, Hey guys, if you want to okay. like know more about health and healing, go over here to my, I don't that's know, right. strategize. You have to, that's what people. you do though, because yeah. a lot of people want that. I know. And I'll podcast. be there. I'll check it out. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank are you, you, are you going to get the, uh, the big bowls so you can do the little yeah yeah i actually i don't have one and i need to in order to because i haven't started my um my training for my meditation teaching that comes and i'm doing that in the next month to turn two and then i'm really gonna need the bowl you know because that's how you or a chai i need something i need something to, yeah. to delineate the beginning and the end of the meditation that's right that's right so yeah and well, that's don't exciting. meditation though it's really no what you can't be bad at it and there's no oh, such thing you haven't seen me yet <laughs> is it just sitting alone with just sitting you sit quietly just makes you nuts or what it's a, no I, I, you know i think i actually i actually think i'm probably fine at it i'm probably just fine you I know and it is it is relaxing 
I don't know if I'm getting everything I need out of it, but when I've done that, it has been very relaxing. Yeah. You know? And it's not even so much what you're getting out of it in while you're sitting there. Cause that, that's what's, you know, our expectations are like, should I be seeing visions? Should I be <laughs> seeing God? Um, it might not be that profound, but what will be profound if you practice it regularly is your life. <laughs> You'll look yeah. around in your life and you're all of a sudden sort of magical things are starting to happen. I love that. Coincidences are coming in, synchronicities, and you're like this. And I, you know, where you're like, oh, let's do this. I'm like, let's do it. Yeah, I've been meditating and here we are. Yeah, now here we go. You're going to help me launch my Ayurveda. That's right. We're launching it. Practice. Yeah, when you're ready, you <laughs> got to come back. We'll launch. do it. Thank we'll you. do it. I love to. I love We've to. got, you know, I thought I told you, we started in our bed, a bedroom. My son and I started in a bedroom, but now we've moved to a studio. So Good I for can, you. Yeah. So now I got room. I, I'm ready. There I can, you go. I can, I can so yoga you and your son started it together? We did. So it was actually his idea. So he, mm -hmm. um, he's in college for film school and he's, he wanted to, he wanted to do it with his friends, but he couldn't find anybody to be consistent. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll do it. He gave us something to connect with. Oh, but I then he that. figured he figured out that he doesn't actually like to be on camera. He prefers to do the editing and, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't really mind being on camera. So there we go. Very cool. I love it. <laughs> That's so, such a sweet story. Isn't yeah, it's been uh, three years and. We're getting close to about 300 episodes. So we've been busy. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's been fun. It's been That's fun. so cool. He's got the hard part. I just get on here and babble. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the hard part. I couldn't do what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To listen and edit and yeah, and log. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm much more, I'm better, better at talking myself. Oh, before I know we got to wrap up, but before I let you go, he did make, he told me, he said, dad, make sure you ask her about Grand Theft Auto because he said oh, you did some voices for Grand Theft Auto, like one of the older games. I did. Yeah. This is back in my New York days. Um, I did a bunch of stuff for Rockstar Games. Um, I did live action capture, like live uh, capture. Is that oh, the motion call? capture. Motion capture. Thank you. Yeah. With the little bulbs all over your, you know, your facial <laughs> features and your body and your joints. Yeah, um, but awesome. I did Grand Theft Auto. I did like, um, I, I honestly, I'm probably, I don't even know if you'd be able to find me. I'm like, I did several hours of like, oh, no, get out of my <laughs> way. Like, I'm like a pedestrian that gets like thrown across the road or something, yep. you know? So I'd like, I'd be like a little old lady being like, no. And then I would be like, a, so I was, I was just people getting hit by cars, basically. Um, that had to be fun. It was so fun. I love doing voiceover. I, it's my kind of my, no one wants me for it really. Um, <laughs> but I wish they did because I love it. There's something You'll tell so them like, thrilling. Hey, you need somebody hit by a car. I'm your girl. Yeah, hit me up, you know? Um, I, cause it just don't have to, you know, as actors, we have to think so much about what this is doing. Yeah. And if you can just put that aside and then you don't, you don't care about hair and makeup and angles and lighting, all of it. And you can just, really just emote you know yeah, just it's let so loose fun i find it to be i loved it um yeah. and then they kind of realized that i could also move and so they i went from doing that game and then they were like well you know what see because they really needed people to do i did like the um they knew I, they found out i can play ping pong and oh. so i did like the, the ping pong game yeah i did yeah i did all kinds of cool stuff for them um i'm in a ton I, i'm i think i'm in a lot more than i'm even get, giving getting credit for on my imdb um i worked for rockstar awesome. for kind of a couple of years yeah yeah that's pretty awesome that's fine oh, i could i could do that and that's all i'd need i'd be okay with that i think i i honestly i kind of feel that way too i loved it i hello rockstar you're out there yeah you're out there um, come back yeah, I, I, I'm real. I, I love doing it. I love voiceover stuff. Yeah, that's that's really neat. Well, Jamie, this has been so much fun. And now so, now that we have a sequel coming. I, I know. Wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> thank you. Well, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're giving me the confidence, too. Look at you, like starting yes. your own podcast. I'm going to. I'm no, you have to do inspired. it. Yeah, you have to. Have to here, I'll, tell, I'll give you the. I'll give you the quick history of this podcast. So we, okay. we started, had no clue what we were doing, none. And, uh -huh. and we were very technically inefficient. 
So the, the early episodes were pretty rough and we made just, uh, just tons of mistakes, but we just left them in there. We didn't edit back then. We just left it all in there. And the, the more mistakes we made, the bigger the audience got. I guess mm. they thought it was hilarious, but then yeah, as sure. we, as we got better, they stuck with us. So then eventually we, you know, we had an actual podcast. That's so cool. Nice. But now it is kind of fun going back and listening to those early episodes because they are, they're pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> but also what a great reminder of how far you've come. You That's know? right. It, it reminds yeah. us. Yeah. So Good before, before I let you go, mm -hmm. is there anything that you have upcoming that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Um, I only, I just, one little thing. I just did a, a little short. Um, I've never Ooh. done a short before. Yeah. Um, That's and it was fun. really fun. It was called Virgil. Uh, I have no idea where in the world <laughs> it will be available. Um, but it's a really cute and cool little, um, you know, teaser. They're like kind of yeah. hoping to make a feature. Um, and it was really fun. Uh, I think that's the only thing that I have. Is it going to make the there. festival circuits? I'm sure they'll try. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't, we just shot it a few weeks ago, so I haven't even seen ah. footage from it or anything, but it looks good. Like, I mean, it's it, like the set looked great. The direct, you know, it was really good director. It was, it looked like fun. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, you know, we'll see. It'd be fun yes. for that to be like, make That's its awesome. way around the festivals and stuff. Um, yeah. It seemed like it had pro promise. And um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else in the world that I, ha that hasn't aired. Like everything else is, there for the you know what we didn't talk about we didn't talk about the good place oh yeah oh. yeah you of oh. course you were front you were in the bad place i was in the bad place uh i couldn't have been happier there um i loved i loved our little dark world you know i know um, it was so good. In, in the period stuff like i loved that you know it was existed in this strange 1950s 60s you know i don't know i all like everything was uh like analog and weird and i just i don't know i just was i loved our our sets i loved our whole world it was a um, great show. and it was yeah it was really really freaking fun we actually did um a that people should watch because it's super funny we did a uh like a little six episode i watched that it was so good it was really great wasn't it i thought it was yes. it out really well we shot them all in a day it was <laughs> that's a long bananas. day it's a long day um but they were but yeah that's on like i think peacock or something i think peacock, yeah, it's on peacock. Long, and they were trying to you know get some some content to help drive people over there um, cause it was just the bad, it was like the bad place. It was people. just the bad place because yeah. Mike sure had said, you know, they asked him to do, they wanted him to do like a sort of a small six episode kind of, you know, short kind of podcast or a uh, series kind of thing. And when he thought about the one part of the world that he felt like wasn't fleshed out as much as he would have liked it to be, it was the bad place. So yeah. he was like, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be the bad place. It's just, uh, there's just more I had, there's just so much, there's so much there, you know? <laughs> Um, and there's so much potential there. So he, that's, so he focused on that area. Um, that's awesome. and it was, it was really fun. It was, it was so fun to watch. Thanks. Okay. So last thing, where can we find you on social media? I am on, I'm not on Facebook, the last human being on earth that never, <laughs> never joined. Um, and then, but I am on Instagram and Twitter. I have, I'm, I've been very inactive on Twitter. The politics of late have made me very. Scared. Yeah, me too. And I just, I, I don't feel. I just, I don't know. I just I, to add to that chorus is in that <laughs> cacophony. Actually, I just was like, no. Um, I, I read Twitter, but I don't, I don't really participate that much. And then, but I, so I'm at Jamie Williamson on Instagram. Yeah. And soon to be at Jamie or Veda. I don't know. I haven't named it yet. But yeah, we got to get a name for you. Yeah, I have to figure that out. You can come back here and announce it. Okay. It'll be, we'll make a big deal. <laughs> okay. We'll get a banner. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm so glad that I have somewhere to go to like, yeah. to, you got to it. launch. Yeah, Thank you, you. got to come back and launch. I'll get Brett. Brett's my son. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll meditate together. I will, oh, I would love that. Yeah. I, oh my God, if I could just bestow that little gift to you, I would be so happy. Yeah. That well, so it would it would help you and it would uh you know straighten my bus just, out. It would we definitely yeah, it would get your <laughs> you would get your spine and in, in good shape. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, and we all do, honestly. We all do. 
Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. It's it's we been a stressful balance. year. Yeah. I, although yeah. we're going on two years. I know, and it, there's no end in sight. No. It's like, no. yeah. So yeah. We need good. So news. we need this more than ever. Yeah. That's right. That's right. All right, Jamie, hold on one second. So that was Jama Williamson. She was awesome. That was, uh, she was so good. She was so good. And obviously now we've got somebody to teach us the meditation stuff, which if you've listened to the podcast, I've said before, I would like to get into that. So that's going to be uh, pretty exciting. I, I, I really hope that uh, we get to have her back on real soon. She was such a wonderful, wonderful lady. That was, uh, that was just a blast really enjoyed that and there was she's done so many things and, and we just touched on a few of them i didn't get to uh i loved her on this show called rake and we didn't get to talk about that but she was terrific she was on weeds she was on uh the Chappelle show uh 911 ncis she's done all the shows and and i really would have uh, like talked to her i think she's such a wonderful comedic actress but she's actually really good with the drama too so hope you enjoyed that really appreciate you guys tuning in week after week definitely don't take that for granted um thank you guys if you haven't done so already please 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 go to youtube under meistercon pod and subscribe we would really appreciate the help you can also find us on our website meistercon.com it's got all I don't know, 260, 270 episodes, uh, audio and video. There's hundreds of interviews on there. I guarantee you'll find somebody you like. And there's also a ton of uh, just geeky podcasts where it's just me and Brett talking about, you know, whatever uh, is going on uh, in pop culture. And they're fun and they're geeky. And I think you'll, you'll really enjoy those. So check those out. Uh, there's also a, a great blog from Brett. He's, he's a wonderful writer. He's funny. It's geeky. Kind of the, the, uh, the theme of the show. I think you guys will really enjoy that. So please check that out. Meistercon.com until next time. Bye everybody.